Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Bowser Chapman on this Friday, the 20th of January. I keep saying 20th, but it's the 19th of January. What's really important about this session is <clears throat> that, you know, we talk about rotational tops, but uh, synchronous lows. Uh, that, it's not like it's the tradition of Wall Street, but if you go back to chart after chart after chart, you'll find that. Major bottoms occur when there's a synchronous within the same day or within two, three days. All the Almost all the indices make a low and then we move up. Tops are actually spread out. And very often January is a top kind of a, a month where, you remember January, well, in 2000 it was January, maybe the 14th or so. Um, and it was then March where the semiconductor and the S&P made its high. That was in 2000, and you can just go on back in October, uh, the October high in the market. That was nearly synchronous, but not really. But the lows, you know, you've got the uh, low of January the sixth, uh, March the sixth of 2009. That was a Friday. Uh, actually, that's where we went along the diamonds at the exact low, and then on Friday, the S and P made its low. So it was within a day or two. In fact, it was within two day two market sessions because the weekend was in between. So I'm not saying that there's a major top here. What I am saying is that if you look at the charts, you'll see that that same uh, organization of actually let me get out of this, this is the um, this is the E mini made a peak F E top at the Doji candle at about eight o'clock. And uh, pull back since then. Let me just get this. This is what I want to show you. So let's just go through this one at a time. Uh, and then in the update, the market update 10, I said the crude oil was down. That's because I hit CL. I didn't realize I didn't hit at CL, which is the symbol for the crude oil um, continuous contract. That, that is up 52 cents at 74.45. Uh, but it's basically stuck in a range. So let's just go through this. I want to show you one at a time. The Dow made a high at 37,719, the Dow on the 2nd of January. They made a cup formation, and on the, did I forget to put the date? Was it the 12th? Yep, the 12th of January, a week ago exactly. It made a nominal new high, and that nominal new high um, went to, let me get rid of this right here. There it goes. It went to uh, 37,825, 35 points higher. But look, the MACD was much weaker. The stochastic was much weaker. The on-balance on volume was actually pretty good, but it hit that high. The nine-period moving average, and I needed to show you this, because what I had said a little while ago when we went short the Dow is that we, we are long on core positions from March of 2020 and October of 2022 along the Dow, in fact, along the um, since October 2022, we're along the Dow diamonds and the three times long UDOW. Shouldn't do that. We've done it um, because it's already a short term instrument. But I wanted to see if our stops would hold and the hell stops have held. So very nice. But what I'd said is, if you look at the chart, August the 1st, when we got that sell signal, went short right there um, on the 1st, uh, 1st of August. Look what happened. It took about nine sessions before that nine period exponential moving average actually flipped to negative. And then there was a pretty sharp decline, sharp decline, and that went uh, you know, down to the 32,000s. So what I'd said is there's a question mark. I put it over here and I said, are we in the same situation? I still don't know if we're in the same situation. Everything I'm looking at suggests that the, the consolidation, and now I need to go to this chart as well because it's really important, this chart right here. 
I want to do a summation here. It's just looking at these different indices and stocks. I've got questions. I'll, I'll get to them. But most importantly, what I am looking at here is I started off back in mid-December and I said, I'm calling this a Chem Wave Dark News Cloud Cover Initiation. I can't make the color as strong as I used to do over here and all these highs that were made. Oh, just go look how many DNCC, that's dark news cloud, cloud cover. I'll be changing in the next couple of days. I'll be changing this to the dark news cloud index. Um, and not even the cloud, I'll just call it the dark news yeah, cloud index. But, and most importantly is I said that the only thing I can really tell is that the dollar could rally and the yields could rally. But other than that, I don't I, I don't get the sense. I've got a couple of little clouds in the sky, but I, I don't get this whole feeling of oh, pending pending sharp move down, a couple of weeks of really ugly action. I do see a consolidation. So I'm keeping that, and I did change the color a little bit. I made it not as light as that, but even here is a, a little too light for me. It's just saying that in this particular format, there is a chance, and now I'm going to go to the week. I'm jumping around today because it's Technical Friday with the Chapman Wave methodology. I'm jumping around because I, I wanted to show you that this expanding wedge, which to a certain extent, mm, I don't really want to do that, but I can do it on the S&P. To a certain extent, I could consider, oops, wrong chart, right here. I could consider that it's, yes, maybe it's a fulcrum to the upside. I don't see it just yet. I don't see how the uh, the semiconductors at this particular point, other than having this explosive move to culminate, a move to the upside before taking uh, quite a bit of a timeout, I don't see it as the start of a brand new move to the upside. But if you look at the S&P weekly chart, there's no question that I could call this just the initiation of what I call a Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. I don't want to go into that right now, but I do want to go into this pattern that says it could become a fulcrum. Usually on the downside, if I look to the left, I'd look at a doji candle. That would give me the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. This is way, way too big at this particular point to say 4103, the low of October, uh, the, 20th, the week of the 27th to the high that we just made of 4802, that's the one. And now we're going to go an extension to the upside. Now, what I am saying, yeah, I'm not ruling out that that in a way could become uh, a push to the upside, maybe a one-third rally to the now rather than later to the 4920s. And we're at 4788, all-time high is 4818. Uh, oops, yes, 4818. Um, so... Oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. All I'm saying is I'm going one step at a time. We remain short the Dow. Um, we only had one other short. There was a semiconductors. We took profits there. We have nothing right now. Um, I'm considering that there's a chance that we get back in. I'm trying to go under, under, the, under the radar into certain sectors that I think have a chance to move up even if the general market pulls back right here. But I also want leadership stocks, and that's why we still have our Microsoft. Uh, he's the age who I said, why Microsoft is a pot of diamonds for the Dow because it has the Dow S&P, S&P Select, Tech Stocks, and the QQQs. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi right, folks, we're back. I'm just doing a notation on MasterCard. Good comment by Phil in the den. This confuses me. MasterCard Incorporated MA, that's a symbol. 434.05 of 3.33. I got it up just a little less right now. With a trillion dollars in consumer debt and delinquencies rising, why wouldn't this get hit? You see, I need to put, I'm trying to put this together as, as best I can. So this is MasterCard. I'll just tie, I have, of course, I've got all of these MasterCard, American Express, everything uh, notated, but I don't have it right now for some reason. So um, I'll get to it in a moment. I just wanted to get it notated. Now I'm going to get back because I had questions and I want to do all, every question. So I'll put down MA right here. Friday. Um, MA. Okay. I'll circuit. Hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll lower my head to actually see what I've written. Always forget to do that. Okay. So let's just do this. <clears throat> I'm going to run the numbers. Dow. Dow Industrials are trading up uh, 88 37,559. Under the 37,825 high of the 12th. Now, just because the left side and right side say that the right side was much weaker, that 9 EMA is absolutely critical. Remember, I call it the tactical tool of last resort. When you think everything's going to down the down the drain, if that nine period moving average is holding, look at this. Here's this. Look how steady it was. It kept looking all the way through the evening last night. And last night was it last night? Yes, it was. Um, I remember. So I, I was going to spend a lot of time on this today. Maybe I'll do it later in the week or next Friday. This pattern, for those of you who trade the futures, keep in mind that when you have this big strong move up to the four o'clock time frame, even if in the next fifteen minutes or so there's a sudden spike. That sideways narrow rectangle formation, which can go on for hours. Look at the tiny trading band in the e mini futures. The S&P, I mean, that's amazing. And yet it kept walking the nine period moving average. Then it went pink for about an hour and then it crossed over 
and it was green all the way from two o'clock this morning until eight or right. Eight, there was a doji candle high at eight twenty, and it took all the way until nine twenty, an hour and twenty minutes. That's uh, six, uh, uh, five, six uh, trading bars, ten minute bars before it crossed negative, and it's still negative even though it's trying to rally here. So with that in mind, let me just show you a couple of things. So the Dow is holding the 9P moving average. The distance between, I'll, I'll do it over here. The distance between, how look how close it was. When the futures yesterday, you remember the futures early on were very negative. We had catapulted down, then, then it rallied. It was so close to turning pink. And what does the pink says? It's the pink says you've gone from from a buy signal to maybe a sell, a buy mode, so, sorry, to a sell signal and then a sell mode if the price for a couple of times closes sharply above the 14 period moving average. Here we are, three bars under the 14, and it's still not even giving me a sell signal. Even though we are short, it hasn't given the signal. And you can see here, this is, this is, the, this is using on balance volume. This is using just the 914, which we have there, and the gray is the actual price. Look at the S&P. S&P right now is up 14 at 47.95. And look, we've gone, look at, yeah, look at this rectangle. Look at that bumping into the resistance. Sometimes, you know, when you've got a long, narrow rectangle, you go right to the door. You go right to the resistance or right to the support. And you think, aha, you're going to break out. And then it just turns around, remains right in the narrow rectangle. And the whole rule, a bunch of rules I have for subscribers to open the call, it's on my site. You can, if, you, uh, if you are a subscriber to the opening call, you automatically get 10, 11 uh, webinars just going through all these different things in great detail. But look, here's the S&P. The 9P moving average was close yesterday to turning pink. Didn't it's green? Still green. Look at the QQQ. QQQ had a sharp move for one day. It went pink. Now it's gone green. And for one day so far, one bar, let's call it a bar, it's popped over the resistance. And that nine period moving average is still strong. On balance volume gave you a nice uh, turnaround the other day. And now we've made a higher high, but the on balance volume hasn't. So a little bit of a divergence. Look at the IWM. So the Qs are two, up to 42 at 41.15.41. Look at this. Turn pick went from a sell signal to a sell mode. It's the only major index, index that's let alone in a sell signal, but in a sell mode. <clears throat> and look how serious that is. The guy's expanded with on balance volume, getting no support at all. Uh, that's down 72 cents at 189.84. Look at this. I'm going to take a moment on the SMHs. We went pink for one day. Remember, we were short. We took profits on the short position, and then we just got out of it yesterday for a very tiny gain on the remaining. But, <clears throat> and now we've stepped aside. So look at this on balance, on balance is climbing. You call this uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, D, and E in the on balance volume. But that nine period moving average is very sharply higher. To get the SMHs, semiconductors, and remember, I believe strongly that where the semiconductors go, the general market is either going to follow or um, maybe the market's leading. That's not the point. The point is I don't have anything technically right. I did before on the negative side. I don't have it right now. Other techniques are going to have to be used to get some kind of a sell signal. So, so far, this is a leading indicator, and it's leading. So with that said, let's just look at look, applied material. Uh, applied materials is up. Look at that. Gap's up. The 9 period today just went positive. Uh, the... On balance volumes turned up nicely, but it hasn't quite broken out to where it was just in December, but it's testing the highs. But let's go to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is up uh, five at 576.87, uh, getting a little overboard on the unbalanced volume, but then nine is still over the 14 very strongly. That's a good sign. Oh, I don't want to go through them all, but let's go to Intel, INTC. INTC. That one's fading. Remember, it was leading before as a as a catch-up stock and then a bit of a leading stock. Now it's fading again. And let's just finish up with advanced micro devices. AMD, very nice action up until today. It's up $1.60 at 164.28. Just showing signs, a little bit of wear and tear right here. 
So that's a process. So you remember we were looking at the the nine period moving average over the 14. I use it as a, uh, my, I call it the indicator of last resort in the Dow. And the Dow says, we'll see where we close. It's up 78. Um, so I'll give you the story here because it's really important. For the Dow, we've got, so these are all techniques. I don't know, maybe one day I'll have to spend, start off with a, a month every every three days or so talking about one of my plethora of Chapman Wave techniques. So look, here we've got, uh, should I, how do I do this? Oh, I'll just expand it for now. It'll probably mess me up, but that's okay. This is called, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's not a perfect one. That top wick is just a little too long, but everything else meets the criteria. Then what I'd said is to subscribers, if it holds under the midpoint of this long wick for over 90 minutes, there's a chance not only will we test the low of the previous day, but we'll go under it, we'll be dead, and then we closed up above it. We had all, look at this conglomeration of red, Chapman Wave automated in the 120-minute chart support levels. Look at that resistance level. Then yesterday we made another, this is a green Chapman Wave Roman candle. I need to talk about it when we return because uh, these are important. And the Dow's up 78, SB's up 12, Basel Chapman Tiger Technicians Hour. We will be back talking about the market and Chapman Wave technicals. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, within the context of these Chapman Wave Roman candles, 
make it as simple as possible. If today at any point there is a trade that goes for about 60 minutes, that would be house to uh, 222. Uh, there's a real good chance we will test the low within a day. Um, but if there's a close above yesterday's high, and yesterday's high was 30. Uh, 7,122, oops, 37,522. That is a positive on the short term. Uh, just uh, do, I'm doing short term, right? Okay, let's get out, out of this and let's go to the things, the questions that came up. So I needed to go to, I had a question about um, gold. So a couple of questions actually. So gold is uh, up five. You know, it's just kind of stuck. There are a lot of things that are really. Uh, not the certain gold stocks are going to be independent, they're going to just be doing the thing moving up and some will be moving down. But the actual contract itself, you put it together with the GDX, and you can see that uh, lower low, there's nothing really here at the moment. And one of the reasons is the dollar, it isn't strong, it isn't great, it's actually holding very well. It's had a very nice move. I should do this. I should do a fib on this one here. Then it starts to get messy. So I'll probably just put it in and take it away. But you can see this balance has gone all the way to look, from there to there in the GDX. And just as I thought, very close to the 38.2 level re rebound. Um, a, peak, a peak B in the weekly chart. But that MACD in the week, you see the stochastic and all the MACD, everything in the daily chart, very nice action. But it's not nice action if it's not able to get over the 200 period moving average repellent zone. This is the dollar. It needs to be moving sharply high. And that's just the reason why it said, I think we're in for a consolidation in parts of the market. And that's kind of what we're looking at. If you look at the EUR, I'll just do this real quickly. EUR, USD, look at this pullback. It's not very pretty, but it's not it's not ugly. It's just lower lows and lower highs. It's simple with the 1.080 as the target of the, the downside. That's the 200 period moving average. Uh, looking at the USD JPY now, this is a little different. Look at this. The, this is the yen gone to a leg D. We said this should go to a D with the strength that it's got, and today it's got a leg D. And if you talk about the percentage, the kind of move to the upside. On the based on the technicals, this is actually very nice action. See, look, the MACD is huge, strong. Stochastic's up at 95 percent. The there's no unbalanced volume because this is a, this is a currency pair; it doesn't have volume. You have to use something else to get that. Um, but what we've got is look at this retracement. Let's grab the fib numbers here, right there, fib right there, and fib down to there, and look where we are. We're almost at the 618. Look at that. Very nice. It's a really good. And look at this. Remember, I love channels. I've been drawing channels for over, over long over 40 years. Um, why? Because I used to hand chart with engineering paper and pencil and ruler. And that's how things were done. And meantime, back at the range, what we're looking at is that resistance level, that support level became resistance level for a moment. Then we left it alone. Now we're coming back to it. And what does it say? Just based on this one technique alone, 149.50 uh, is about the resistance level on the weekly chart. We're at 148.38 in leg D. Today, the high was 148.80. Um, and look at the monthly chart. I said this is a pattern that goes up towards the left side high, then stalls. What's the midpoint? Well, we, we, all, we tested the midpoint, <clears throat> fraction above it, and now we've moved higher. So, so far, the dollar yen. Japanese currency says the yen is actually doing pretty darn nicely, you know. You wouldn't think about it, especially. Well, wait a minute. Look at this NK. Oh, I hope I've got the no. Yes, I do. Leg E in the monthly, leg C in the weekly chart. This is the NK, Nike, um, Nikkei 225 USD continuous contract. C has gone to a peak D in the daily chart. Very strong. So, um, as a chart, it's a strong chart, right? And now what we're looking at is it's at a peak D. Will it stall here? Well, so far it's doing very nicely. Okay, now let's get back to the gold. So the question came in, could I also look at PHYS? I think I've got it all notated. I do. Look, it made a peak E and then a very quick peak A, B, C, D. Um, slightly higher than that peak E in late November, early December. And then 
late December, it goes to a D and it fails. But it hasn't taken out the left side low. It's at 15.62. Uh, and the monthly chart says, hey, you talk about the indicator of last resort. That nine-period moving average is still strong, very strong in the weekly chart. The uh, It made a double top just as we were looking at. It did it in exactly the time sequence that we were looking at. Um, it also, the MACD is still strong, stochastic still at 83. So there's nothing really wrong with this. I'm just saying I think that Bitcoin, and remember I said Bitcoin was on a sell signal to a sell mode with that peak F about a week ago. Um, and here it is from the uh, just about 48,000 to 40,000. That's quite a pullback. And it's a peak E in the weekly chart. Remember, we're looking at, was it ETHE I was asked about? And I said, yeah, uh, what, what should I do? And I said, you yeah, know, I take a little bit off, but it is a peak D. And um, it's holding actually a little bit better in some ways, but it is a peak D in the daily and a leg D now, a peak D in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, this is, this is the time that we're going to see whether or not gold is able to hold and then become a little bit of a leader if the Bitcoin area starts to pull back because I think the Bitcoin is taking away from the speculation in the, in the, in the gold. The other thing is that the dollar is... Um, part of it it's, it's kind of complex but most importantly I think I'm going back to my geopolitical statement way back and I, what I said is I believe that this very quick move up to the 4th of December high in gold and then the pullback with the inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle is essentially telling you that there's a ground operation going on um, in, um, in Gaza and it's not using the kind of equipment and it's not it doesn't have the geopolitical rush to gold as a fear indicator and as a, a an insurance policy and that's made the big difference so the fact that the gold miners has not been all that strong the fact that gold can't hold us ready the fact that silver actually looks very very weak um, tells me that the conflagration in uh, the Middle East it's going to go on longer, and it's more a ground operation. It's using different types of military uh, equipment, etc. And that's really why I am there. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, I said that. Uh, now, let's just go to that. So, PHYS is the physical, this is called spot, spot physical uh, gold. And it's not bad. The nine period moving average has gone negative. It's kind of weak. Monthly chart, weekly chart. Uh, look, Chapman Wave Roman Candle, small one right here. It says that at any point next week, if for one whole, I'm going to make it a whole day. For a whole day, if there is a trade close, uh, a trade below 15.50, is it 15.63 right now? There's a good chance we will test the low in the 1540s um, and maybe even take it out next week. So, what's that? Well, I think I've done everything I needed to for the questions that came in there. Um, now we'll look, we'll come back when we'll look at Meta, we'll look at MA MasterCard, we'll go back to that. I'll finish the presentation. Dow is up uh, 58, this is up 30. Holding pretty darn well, I must say. We're going to watch this close, going into the close of the show. Um, the Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So MasterCard, um, as we're speaking, at an all-time high at 433.76. Is this a brand new B or is it an alternative count E slash B? You know, the technicals are strong enough for me to say, um, for now, just give it the benefit of the doubt. Just be very strict because the nine period moving average held beautifully, it didn't even go pink. So this is a continuation of that pattern. But the, the stochastic did go very sharply low to the 40% level and then ran up. On balance volume is uh, pulling back a little bit. And the stochastic at 81% is good. The relative strength has been very strong. So just for the moment, I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to say MasterCard is acting extremely well. And so legs C in the weekly and a legs C in the monthly. It should make higher highs in 2024. If you look at American Express, please say that I've got all the notation. Please, please. Uh, well, as best I can. I haven't updated it. So this is A, B, C. Oh, there it is. Look. So we're always looking for at least the peak D in a buy mode. So there's another one. So American Express. So the, I've read about these delinquencies. I've read about delinquencies. I've read about in car payments. It's at one of the highest levels. It's been at for a long time. Um, this all comes back to roost, you'll see. But in the meantime, we just have to follow the chart. And the chart says that the uh, American Express is pulled back. Is it a single leg A up in the weekly chart? Yes, I believe it is. Um, and is it a W formation within the, re the re a large rectangle in the monthly chart? And it says yes, and it says it should target at some point in 2024, uh, probably in the next two months, it should target the 199.55 high of February of 2022. So with that said, um, they, they were all doing something very different. But here, uh, look, let me just look at the chart on the right. Keep looking at it. This is American Express, AXP. Now we're going to go to MA. They do different things uh, within the credit card business. Isn't that a much superior chart, right? That's MasterCard. All right. So unless we've done that, question came in as well about, um, so talking about the uh, payment methods, um, we're going to go to PayPal, PY, PL. Yeah, different chart altogether, but a really nice mode. Oh, look at that. Up three at 65.25, right at the 200 period moving average. Um, yeah, so here's your starting point peak A, right? Uh, sorry, from the trough to start leg A was way down at 50. 
<clears throat> and here we are at 65. So this is either a continuation or a brand new move to the upside, PayPal. And this is what I was talking about when I did my webinar on saying the laggards. What areas in the market in 2024 should have very strong movements to the upside <clears throat> to participate as laggards and then become almost independently strong? Oh, let's just look at Wayfair. Someone asked me about Wayfair. Wayfair. So here's one that was up in the, it was up in the, was testing the moon for gravity and didn't quite work out up in the 369 area, round number 369, January, there's a monthly chart, January of 2021. And then it tumbled just a little bit down to 29, I think it is. Here it is at 56, horrible weekly, monthly chart. A lousy weekly chart, the daily chart had a big spike to the upside. It's up five today at 56.02, must have had earnings, 200 period moving average. So some of them are just going to fail. They're going to have a real Wayfair, furniture, lighting, cookware, online. Um, some of them are going to really struggle. If you look at Shopify, kind of in the same area, just in terms of huge decline, Shopify was once at 176. That was split. It was split, I don't know how many times, but it was in the thousands at some point in November of 2021. So, yeah, it is a 176.29. This is a split price. It dropped 86% to 23.63. And now it's up at um, 77 after a peak D pullback and a leg B, probably a peak B this week. Uh, this is, each one's doing something different. So I think there's lots of room in 2024 to see different areas of the market do well in a rotational way so that even as the market in some sectors is doing something differently, um, the particular sector that you might be focusing on might in fact be doing quite well. So a question came up about AI. Um, where did I type that? Oh, I typed into the den. Sorry, den. What I meant was to put it here. AI is, this is the ETF. This is the AI ETF, Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF. Uh, we've been long for some time. It's trading. It made a 31.45 recent high. 33.45 was the high back in November 2021. It got cut in, almost cut in half. 18.01 was the low in October 2022. And now it's uh, sideways congestion, sideways digestive actor, action um, in the daily, same in the weekly. But, you know, we keep talking about AI, AI. The only one that's really, as far as I'm concerned, has has a mix of the right ingredients for its own software, etc., plus it's a tech, plus it's an AI, plus it's in the Dell, plus it's in the S&P, plus it's in the QQQ, plus it's in the XLK, is Microsoft. So as a kind of a bellwether um, of, of market action in these particular areas, I think it does very nicely. Made an all-time high today, 395.85. Um, this is almost a chap wave cup and ladle breakout pattern to D, which it did. And I've I've drawn in the instant restart. Always put a little yellow circle. If within three bars, peak D is taken out and it goes to a new leg up, then it's called E slash A, F slash B. I didn't type it all in because it looked messy there. But at the same time, uh, this could be an instant restart. But we've seen that when it starts to fail at that F, even with the instant restart, other things can happen. So I want you to also do this. I want you to show you, I wrote it down. Uh, of course, I can't find it. I had a whole bunch of stocks that made PG. So CC, yeah, CC is um, Mr. Moore's company. As man this is in everything that you look at. Manufacturers, advanced uh, performance materials, Teflon, fluoropolymers, Crytex, oh, just a whole bunch of things, lubricants. And look, it goes to peak G, made an all-time high way back here in the 40, something like 45 area back in 2022. Pulls back, but look, not a bad pullback. Um, gone to a leg D in the weekly chart right there. There's your D, pulling back a little bit. Peak G, there's your peak G. <clears throat> in the... Uh, Daily chart, another one was, um, let me just get to these. Oh, man, I thought I wrote it down so clearly. I did. I wrote it clearly. CCI, remember this is one that 
I've spoken about very often, because I typed it in the wrong place again, CCI. There it is, CCI. Yeah, uh, CCI made a peak G right there back in the beginning of December. Uh, peak B in the weekly chart. This was once upon a time up in the 215 area, Crown Castle. Uh, this is a, a REIT, basically. And what it's done is pull back pretty sharply. So, uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, the, the BC is, yeah, BC is also the same thing. That is, uh, Brunswick made a peak G right there. Pull back sharp. So, Brunswick Corporation votes building. I'll be right back. Be for back. Uh, at 94 is and P's up 30. Guys are chopping tight with the mission time. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN. 
educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. A little bit of time left that we've got before you go to Steve Rose and the other shows today. The IAK. You know, I haven't looked at this for age. I completely forgot about it. Thank you for doing the den. We've got iShares, U.S. Insurance, ETF, I. AK. Um, all is this all time? I believe it's all time highs. Whatever it's monthly year highs at 104.36. Very strong monthly chart, very strong weekly chart, and gapped up to a high in the daily and leg D. I like this very much. I would love to see this thing come back. Uh, it's at 104, come back to the low 100s, somewhere between 102 and 100 to have a look at it to see if this is something that could continue leading the way in 2024 for this first quarter. But so far, it's acting very well. So let me just sum up. I think I got to almost all the questions. Uh, one in the in the YouTube. Uh, okay, yeah, just uh, covering, uh, continue what I was talking about. So let me just do this right now. If the Dow, which is up 127, is able to hold, even with options expiration today, after 2.10 this afternoon, if it's able to hold a plus 80s or more, it should have a nice close. That's going to be a really important day because if it slides to negative, that's not going to be good for the close. It won't be good for early 